This video is part of a series helping you to revise for your GCSE Combined Science exams. Today we're looking at how to build an effective revision timetable for the GCSE Combined Science exams. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to the three timetables I'm using in this video. There's one each for biology, chemistry and physics. If you're currently preparing for the GCSE exams, then this might be your first time making a long-term revision timetable. Even if your school ran end of year 10 exams and you took them quite seriously, chances are you still had regular homework to complete alongside that revision and you almost certainly didn't have any study leave where you had complete control of your time. Whether you're watching this in September and you're just starting thinking about year 11 and how to revise across the year, or you're watching it right before your mock exams, or you're even watching it as you're preparing for the real exams, it's really important that you're finding the most effective strategies for you as an individual. Here's an example of what I think is the default for most people when they make a revision timetable. It tends to be hour long slots with a specific subject and you just turn up and try to do something vaguely useful that links to that topic until the allocated time is over. Now this can be a really effective way to organize your time when you have complete control, say over the holidays or if your school gives you study leave after May half term and you work from home when you don't have exams. But in my experience, particularly this early in the year, it has some fairly major pitfalls. So firstly, right now, your teachers are probably still providing you with lots of regular home learning tasks and revision that they expect you to do between lessons. So you might have planned to revise cell biology, but then your teacher gives you some photosynthesis exam questions to do and you haven't got time to do both. And then sometimes life is just going to get in the way. So maybe you miss a bus and you get home late and you've lost out on that time. Or there might be other really valuable opportunities or events that you didn't know about and they're going to take up time when you thought you'd be able to revise a different topic. And also it's far too early to be ignoring your hobbies, but you might have an unexpected rehearsal or training session and that can get in the way of the plan that you've made. Now, if you're like me, you might end up feeling like once you've missed out a couple of bits of the plan, that the whole thing is ruined and there's no point in it anyway. And it could be really easy to feel disheartened and just want to throw it away. And it can just lead to you feeling really overwhelmed and anxious. And also this timetable doesn't really give you any instructions about how to revise or what specifically you're focusing on. And that's just not a good mental space to be in when you're trying to revise and, you know, live. So what's the alternative? For the last few years, instead of a traditional revision timetable, I've recommended revision plans like this one, and you can download mine in the description below. The idea behind this plan is there is no plan. You start with an idea of how much time you can commit, and then you keep a record of what you've revised. So this is about making sure that you're spreading out your efforts so that everything is getting equal coverage and that you're covering all of the essential topics, but it's not about planning to do a specific topic on a certain day. By logging what you've revised, you can keep track of whether you're spending too long on one topic or neglecting one entirely. Now, practically speaking, how is this actually going to work? What is it that you actually need to do? This grid has been constructed using the exam board specification. So I've included all of the topics here that could be in the exams. And then each box represents 20 minutes of revision. It's 20 minutes rather than an hour, partly because you can focus for 20 minutes without looking at your phone, without getting distracted by something else. And also because for a lot of these topics, you're not going to want to spend a whole hour in one go. Now you're not necessarily aiming to fill the grid, but this grid should have sufficient room in it for you to track all the revision that you do. I've put some ideas along the top for different things that you might want to try while revising. Now, it might be the case that you already have one particular method that you're very keen on using. I'd suggest that you try out a few others because often people haven't really investigated the different options and you might find something that works better for you. But generally speaking, active revision is much better. So something where you're really quizzing yourself and checking what you know. You don't just want to be writing notes and highlighting them and making it all beautiful. Now, even if you are really good at revision already and you really know these strategies, I would really recommend that you do look at the specification for your exams. So you want to do that because this is the exact wording that the exam board want you to use. And that's not always accurately reflected in revision guides and other websites. Now, if you haven't already found the specification, then for combined science, this is the web address that you want to go for. 
The other resource that you might not be sure where to find are these recall questions. So I've written these for every topic of GCSE Combined Science. So if you go to this web address or you follow the link, then you'll be able to find the recall questions for the first chemistry topic. But if you just change the number or if you change chemistry to say biology or physics, then you can find all the rest of them as well. So each time that you do 20 minutes of revision, you're going to note down the date so that you can just keep track of how much you've done. So maybe the first time that you revise chemistry, you decide to start at the very beginning. So you look at the specification and you watch a YouTube video and you make some flashcards. And those have taken you three slots of 20 minutes. So you write down the date three times. And then the next time that you revise, you decide to make some more flashcards for some more topics. And then you spend a bit of time using those flashcards and then the next time you branch out and you spend a bit of time on a revision website, but you only have 20 minutes that evening. So you only fill in one box. The useful thing about a system like this is that it gives you a really clear visual indication of whether you've been concentrating all of your efforts on one part of the specification and neglecting some of the other topics. So if you get to the end of September and your grid looks like this, then you can say, actually, for the time being, I need to press pause on those topics that I've been revising. And rather than spending any more time on those, I need to focus on filling in the gaps for the things that I haven't touched yet. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope that you found this a useful introduction to how to lay out your revision for GCSE Science this year. If you did find this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more revision videos coming soon.